Okay, so this is a bit of work in progress for my master grade Sinanju, and there's the inner frame as you can see, which is pretty much complete and painted, and there's some of the armour parts that I'm working on now. Uh, I've kind of stopped mid-flow because I realise this is a pretty good opportunity for me to show you how I paint some of my kits. Now, when I first started off, I used to kind of hand paint my kits, then moved on to spray paints, but these days I've started using an airbrush, uh, but I'm pretty much a beginner at all this. I've probably done about three or four kits by now, and it's really only now that I'm getting comfortable with what I'm doing, and kind of happy with the results I'm getting, I suppose. And the purpose of this video, I guess, is to just show you guys how how I do it, how easy it can be, I guess, and really just hopefully give you some inspiration if you're thinking about just taking that step as well. Um, with an airbrush what I find is uh, it's really easy to use to be honest. Uh, I was surprised by how quickly you can pick one up and really get the technique of using it down enough to to do what well what we do on models. Certainly uh, you know not quite like what artists do in t-shirts or anything like that and I certainly can't paint any crazy flames using it or anything but uh, really, uh, the only thing I would say with an airbrush is, is uh, for me, it, it was the whole thinning of paint and learning how to get it working, especially getting it cleaned after the end of the day and all that. So there is a, I won't lie, there's a bit of a steep learning curve with that aspect, but uh, that's for another video, I guess. So, on to the painting. So, the first step for me is to always prime the parts that you're working on and the reason for that is if you look at this bare plastic especially with Gundam kits I find is the surface is really really smooth and if you try and paint straight onto that with thinned airbrush paints it's not going to work, it doesn't stick and certainly if you're not aware of it then that's probably one of the first things that puts you off so uh, yeah always prime your parts if you're just spray painting then that's fine with most colours maybe aside from white then you can just spray it straight on, you won't have any issues. So that being said, what would you use to prime your parts? Uh, for me, when I first started off, uh, I used this, which is uh, just some normal spray paint. It's grey primer, and a good little tip is uh, this stuff isn't really all that cheap normally. Uh, it's about, in the UK, it's about three or four pounds for a can and you know it's a, kind of these things you just spray it and it goes all over the place and you end up using quite a lot. Little tip for you is this which is Me Machine and it's just grey primer. It's uh, You can get this from pretty much any pound shop uh, and the quality is not fantastic. I certainly wouldn't use it on a Ferrari F430 by the looks of things, uh, if I had one. But uh, yeah, it's certainly good enough for you know this kind of thing. So I would definitely recommend giving this a go if you're just starting off with all of this. Now, I don't really use this stuff anymore because um, if you've got like let's say a real great Gundam or the 30th anniversary RX-78 let's say then they have lots of little tiny little panel lines and with this kind of thing uh, like I say it's quite difficult to control I mean it's either on or off and you start spraying quite a lot and you can easily sort of lose the detail uh, within those panel lines if with this kind of thing and well I guess here's another reason if you look at this then let's see if you'll focus there you go. Um, dangerous for the environment, highly flammable and a general irritant. Now, that's really not the kind of stuff that you want to be spraying indoors at all and not even outside to be honest. Um, you know, it kind of goes all over your windows and if you've got any kids or dogs, don't really care about cats. But, uh, you know, this is sort of stuff that it's not really, whilst it's convenient in a way, it's kind of not. So, <clears throat> if you have an airbrush, then this is one I recommend using. It's a surface primer, which is acrylic, so it's water-based, and it's by a company called Vallejo. Uh, now, this stuff is really, really good, I find. I mean, 
look at the size of the bottle. Uh, here's a standard Tamiya paint and you can see it's massive so uh, those of you who've used an airbrush before will know how little paint it uses and it goes a little goes a long long way so that bottle will literally last ages. Um, okay so that's enough about primers I think let's move on to the actual part painting. Once I've primed the parts what I like to do is a technique called pre-shading and most of you will be aware of this and you've certainly seen it before uh, what I find is uh, it looks honestly much much more daunting than it actually is it, it's in reality I find it to be a really simple thing to do and all you're going to do is take any black paint and just set your uh, airbrush for quite a low pressure and really really fine spray pattern and just go around the contours really and what I use is uh, Anyway, I've said enough about the primers, but here we go. I have another bowl, which is uh, in the black colour, and I use this for general purpose. Um, sort of dark colours, really, and the reason for this is... Um, the reason I like these, sorry, I forgot to mention, is because these come designed for an airbrush, so they're already pre-finned, you don't have to mess around with, sort of, um, you know, getting the right consistency and all that sort of stuff, so that's the reason why I use that. Now, what you do essentially is you go around the contours, as you see in this piece here, and it really doesn't matter if you get it wrong. I mean, you can probably see I'm not very consistent in all these different places, and certainly I think here is, uh, you know, not quite as good as some of these other places, but it really doesn't matter. I mean, you want this looking quite random, I guess. It kind of adds to the effect, I find. So there's a simple, there's a really simple part, and uh, let me just show you a few others. Uh, so here's a, here's something a little bit more interesting. So same kind of thing. You go around the edges, and because this one's got some holes in it, so what you do there is you well that takes a little bit of practice, I guess, and pointing it in the right place, you know, sort of down the middle of the hole and trying to get the edges. But uh, really what you're doing with all this is uh, creating like a shadow effect. So you can see here this is part of the armour piece and uh, some of these spikes would come out of it. And you can see the base I've sort of shadowed there as well. So when they go in uh, together you're going to have like a sort of shadow effect going under the base of, of this spike. Oh, one other thing I mentioned, uh, forgot to mention rather, is uh, whilst I've got the black out then I usually paint the bottom of these parts as well because uh, this one here is you know what sort of goes like that and you can normally see it even though there's an inner frame that it, it attaches onto you can normally still see that so it, it's a good idea to paint the inner side black whilst you're at it and uh, the same kind of thing with this piece here which is uh, also the top part of the shoulder. The next step is to put on a base colour and in the Snanju's case it is obviously going to be red and this is quite simple as well all you're really doing is painting in between everywhere that was black before now the idea here is that it's a two-stage process so you put on the first bit of colour which is uh, the red in between all the black and you kind of purposely leave the black still quite feathered and showing through and the second stage would be to sort of adjust your airbrush for a bit more of a wide angle spray and you kind of put on some thin layers and you do everything at the same time so you do the red as well as coating over the black and what that does is it makes the the red redder and it kind of fades out the black so you get that pre-shaded effect to, to knock it back a little because at the moment it's obviously showing a hell of a lot and it, it doesn't quite look right it kind of looks burnt at the moment but you know, you, you just spray it and you keep going uh, until you're happy with uh, the result and as long as you're not spraying too heavy then it's quite an easy thing to do, you just keep going until it looks right and you kind of get a feel for this kind of thing after you've uh, done a few kits so uh, I'll just show you a few of the parts as well uh, so this is uh, uh, the part, oh, I'll show you a bit of a comparison so there's the uh, before with just appreciating and that's how it looks with the first first layer of uh, base colour on so 
I think uh, as you can see uh, you know I'm particularly this is a particularly uh, interesting piece to show off I guess uh, so yeah I think I'm gonna quite like this effect uh, like, a, like I say that there is not going to be shown as as apparent as this once I start putting on uh, the second coat so just wanted to talk about the inner frame a little bit now I'm usually quite lazy with these uh, at the end of the day they're going to be on the inside so you're not going to see them and I don't spend the full amount of time that I normally do with some of the armour parts uh, what I do is paint them usually a chrome or a silver something metallic and all in one go I kind of put the whole inner frame in all together in one go like you see here and I also paint it at the same time uh, obviously I move the limbs around a little bit and things like the knees just so you can get to all the out all the areas that you know if you just left it in this pose then you're not going to be covering everything so don't forget to do that um, there is one little trick I do though just to make things a bit more interesting and a bit better than otherwise and that is I use this Tamiya Colour XF19 sorry X19 smoke and basically what this is it's a transparent grey uh, that's that's really all it is and what you can do with that is spray it straight over something like this and you're gonna get an effect where it will darken things the more you use of it uh, while still maintaining the met metallic look so what I do with it is I kinda in a bit more of a random fashion uh, is I kinda spray all the joints especially things like the uh, these kinda ball joints here, the hip joints uh, things like uh, the sort of elbows especially underneath the, sh the shoulders and things like that just, uh, just in a lot of sort of random fashion um, I just spray it just so you got different tones of uh, of metallics there and that's why I don't know if you can see it here but it kind of looks a little bit more realistic than otherwise if, if you just spread this whole thing chrome and that was it then it kind of looks a bit odd so that's a kind of lazy way out I guess but you know that's what works for me for the inner frame And that's about as far as I got with the Sinanju so far, so I can't really show you uh, all of the other things I've been talking about, uh, you know, with the uh, finishing of the red parts and all that, so you can't really see how it looks, uh, nor the panel lining or decals or anything like that. But uh, I thought I'd bring in a different kit just to show you uh, how it looks once uh, once you're done, really. And you can see here, this, this uh, was done with the same same techniques and if you look on the shoulder you can see how uh, the edge the contours where it would have been black they're, they're much much more faded now and you get a much more subtle look and even things like on the head I decided to do the bottom part a bit darker than the top and looking around you know you can sort of see the shading coming into effect there it's it's really quite on this one I've done it a little bit too uh, uh, I kind of went a little bit overboard and it's not as noticeable as I perhaps would like uh, but you know it's still much much better than if it was just a flat coat of green so there you go guys that's kind of how I paint my kits at the moment I'm sure I'll learn more as I go along but to get to this stage I don't think it's taken too much time and really uh, I think uh, an airbrush is a worthwhile investment uh, and uh, yeah, good luck everybody, thank you.